Right now, there appears to be two factions within the progressive movement. One faction says that the only way forward for progressive policy is to push for a third party. And the other faction is saying that the only way forward for progressive policy is to do it within the Democratic Party. Now, I often get into debates about this on Twitter. So recently, I got into a discussion with John Amenta, who tweeted this. In the world we live in now, a third party is the only way change will happen. Attempting to reform the Democratic Party is a dead end. So a lot of progressives feel this way, and I totally get it, especially after what happened at the DNC Unity Reform Commission in Las Vegas, where it really just appears that, once again, the established Democrats are trying to enact their power over the progressive wing of the party. But here's where I come out on this. I think the way forward for progressive policy is all the above. I think, yes, we should try and push for a third party, and yes, we should try and reform the Democratic Party. Now, I come at this from a Canadian perspective. So in Canada, we enacted Medicare for All in 1966. Now, that didn't happen overnight, but it was initiated by a third party. So in Saskatchewan, that province got universal health care in 1962 largely because of the push by Tommy Douglas and the Saskatchewan Cooperative Commonwealth Federation, which then later embraced the labor movement and became the NDP. So because of the popularity of Medicare in Saskatchewan, later on in 1966, Medicare for All was adopted nationwide. But it wasn't adopted by the third party NDP. It instead was adopted by a liberal government. Now, the liberal government largely capitulated to the NDP and progressives within the country. And that's why Medicare for All became a thing nationally. So by combining the movement of a third party, the NDP, and the progressives within the Liberal Party that saw the way forward for the country was through a Medicare for All system, it was eventually passed. And it really didn't take all that long for it to happen once it had happened in Saskatchewan. Now, to me, this is an example of something that could happen in the U.S. And it takes progressives on all fronts to make it happen. If you simply abandon the Democratic Party and just put all your hopes into a third party, first of all, it's unlikely that third party is going to really have an effect on the system for a while to come. So the NDP in Canada, even though it began in 1961, the NDP in Canada has never held control at the federal level. So think about that. The NDP in Canada, where a, a parliamentary system where third parties are more viable, the NDP has never had control at the federal level. So when you try and push a third party in the U.S. in a system where a third party really is not viable and it would, it would take just a complete, a complete undertaking or a, a complete reconstruction of the entire political system for a third party to be viable and actually get into a position of power, that's a hard sell. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that a third party movement is not important. As I told you, it was very important in Canada to eventually get Medicare for All. But this is why you need to push on all fronts. That's why there are groups out there like Our Revolution and Justice Democrats. These are groups that are trying to elect progressives to the Democratic Party. And it's already starting to happen. So to simply abandon movements like Our Revolution and Justice Democrats actually does a disservice to the kind of power that a third party could have in the U.S. But by pushing on all fronts through a third party and through the Democratic Party, what you have are progressives working together inside the Democratic Party and outside the Democratic Party to all push for the same policies. Now, no one said it would be easy. So yes, it appears that the Democratic Party has no hope. With Tom Perez as the chair of the DNC, and leaders like Nancy Pelosi in the House, it seems like the Democratic Party doesn't want to represent real people. But it can. The Democratic Party is just a shell. 
What you can do is elect progressives and replace those people. And at some point, the party can become a party of the progressives. Now, right now, it seems insurmountable. But what's even tougher is a third party. Most people, even though they identify as independents and not as Democrats or Republicans, they didn't vote for a Green Party or the Libertarian Party in the last election. They largely voted Democrat or Republican, or they stayed home. And that's because it takes a long freaking time to convince people to vote third party. In a system where all the media attention and all the attention of Washington is on the two-party system. To try and make a third party viable will take years. That's not to say don't do it. That's to say, yes, you should do it. But keep in mind, it can't be the only way forward.